this series on a basic dirt car build using a Mark IV Golf and another change of mind. We've decided to go with this car that had the two litre engine in it as the rally car after all. Uh, I thought James would be phased about the front panels coming off that car and, and it being blue and then charcoal grey but he's not worried about it and as some of you have suggested we're going to put a, a stripe or some graphics to separate the two paint schemes and it'll have so much dust on it, it probably won't really matter anyway. It also makes uh, more sense to make this the rally car because the exhaust is on it, it's got a big bore exhaust system, the suspension's already on it and there's no body damage to it, we don't have to change doors or anything like that. So uh, this is now the car, I hope there won't be any more changes of mine and we can just get on and do things, but it's just part of building a car and having lots of choices isn't it? I could do the little bits of strengthening that I need to on this uh, car while the engine in place but obviously with the engine out it's the ideal time to do it. I want to strengthen the top of the strut towers because I've seen shock absorbers particularly when you fit heavy duty ones and you go on the dirt I've seen them go uh, lift off through there and I've seen them go clean through the bonnet of a car. So I've cut out templates and uh, I'll put a plate on top of either strut tower and fully weld that all the way round and when they're in place you'll hardly even notice it. I like to try and get as a, a factory look to what I do and rather than uh, putting the bar across here that I'm going to as a bolt on I'm just going to weld it in place because we're unlikely to uh, need to put it on another car and we don't need to uh, take the bar out to get the engine out because the strut towers are so far back in this car. That will make the strut towers really firm and stop them doing this movement and make the suspension work a whole lot better. I've got to put a steel bar across here for two reasons. One is to mount the back of the skid plate and the second one is to put a brace between those two lower wishbone suspension mounting points. I'll put tabs on here and I'll make them out of about 5mm steel and I'll weld them onto the chassis because those holes, even in normal road use, can overlise, let alone when you get on the dirt and, um, and put heavy suspension on the car. Uh, so I'll have a bar across the bottom and then I'll have a bar across the top so that becomes a complete rectangle that makes the suspension work a whole lot better and takes the stress of uh, running on the gravel off the chassis of the car itself where things can crack and break. Today I've taken all the body panels off the front and rear of the blue 1.6 Golf that the grey rally car needs and because this engine and its wiring loom are going into a Mark 1 Cabriolet I've actually marked the individual wires not just the plugs because when we come to fit this loom into the Mark 1 we're going to have to cut and splice this to uh, the plugs of the Mark 1. So I've marked all the wires while the power's been on and the lights have been working. That's just about ready to pull the motor on that one. And over on the 2 litre rally car I've put the bar in. I've welded the tabs in place from 5mm steel. If you don't weld those they don't provide any support for the suspension because they can move sideways. So that's why they're welded and that bar stiffens the suspension and provides a mounting point for the sump plate and I've used the uh, lower rear engine steady arm as a reference point because that's the lowest point I could find on the engine. With a Mark IV Golf there's truly more than one way to skin a cat. You remember when I took the engine out of the 2 litre I dropped it onto my hydraulic lifting table and then lowered the table and pulled the engine out the front. That's still tied up that trolley with the motor sitting on it so I've got just a standard little engine dolly that I've got just a platform with four casters on it 
and I've screwed and chopped bits of wood to support the engine and undone all the engine mount. So that engine is now sitting on that trolley. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to jack the car up and then pull the engine forward. Oh, that came out well. Engine's just sitting on that trolley. And I'll screw a few pieces of wood on the back underneath things so it can't fall over on the back. Because that's going to be sitting for a while. And that's sitting level the way it was in the car. Which means uh, that when I come to put it into the Mark I Golf, that engine is sitting horizontally as it needs to be and at the correct height off the ground. So it's going to go backwards and forwards on that trolley in and out of the golf. And if I have to lift this engine over the top and put it into the Mark I Golf, the stand will go with it. The trolley will go with it because it will position uh, the car. So if I need to fabricate mounts or anything like that, I just drop the whole 1.6 motor on the trolley into the Mark I Golf, which isn't here yet and that positions it relative to the ground and I can check how those mounts uh, line up and any fabrication that needs to be done. Putting this simple wheel trolley underneath the engine and building it up with chocks and screwing it in place so it's sitting at the exact right angle in every which way for the transplant positioning is one of the secrets of Redline's easy engine swaps. I've been under both the 1.6 and this, the 2 litre cars, comparing the back half of the extractors that are fitted to them. At first glance you would think they were the same. But you can see how that lower pair of pipes off the 1.6 is much longer there. That's a better system because that will give you a little more torque with the engine. It'll help the engine breathe better. The other thing I found is that when I measure the entire diameter of the pipes at that joining flange on the pipes that run 1.6 and compare it with the same measurement on this system that was on the 2 litre, this is actually smaller. So what you've got here is a, a system with a big pipe and this is restrictive compared to this setup. So I'm going to take these pipes off the 1.6, put them on the 2 litre. And instead of the uh, VW factory exhaust joining sleeve, which is a bit cumbersome to work with, I'm going to put in these exhaust plates. I'll weld one on there, one under the pipe. That way it's easier to, uh, to unbolt and remove the system on a few occasions when you need to do that. So we'll get the best system on the 2 litre. I've got the engine bay on the blue 1.6 Golf that we're stripping for parts for James's Mark 1 Cabaret conversion just about completely stripped out check out the length of that wiring loom and those two uh, lengths of wire everything has to go back through there through that hole and then inside the car <laughs> There's the rest of the loom coming through here and that's all the stuff that goes to the back and across there you can see uh, all the heater and air conditioning stuff's completely gone from there. It was just easiest to move that out so that I could get to the bolts on that plate. There's a bar that goes across there that holds the dash. Uh, I think we've got it over here on the ever growing and increasing in height pile. You know, there's one of the airbags. That bar there, if you're ever taking that out, uh, there's a bolt on the firewall side. So you to undo all the bolts on this side and it won't come out and you've got to go into the engine bay and undo a bolt on the other side of the windscreen. But that wiring loom's all marked and ready to go. And uh, this car is getting fairly close to go to God. Well, here's... <laughs> An entire 
main wiring loom and a Mark IV Golf. Weighs about 10 kilos. Uh, this is what James wants to put into the Mark I Golf. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff on here that we won't need, like anti-lock brakes, um, airbags, uh, sound system, electric mirrors, uh, electric windows, all that sort of stuff, even the interior roof lights. He won't need any of that. But he can fit that to the car, I think. I'll leave that job for him, eh? One of the big challenges for international car manufacturers wanting to make a truly world car is they need to be able to supply it in both left-hand and right-hand drive. Now, in America, the cars are left-hand drive, but I've seen guys who follow a particular uh, fetish, if you like, of wanting to own and drive on the road right-hand drive cars in a left-hand drive country. And I've seen one guy on a forum take an EG Civic, cut the entire firewall out, and then, uh, having stripped the car, and then import a, a right-hand drive body shell, cut the firewall out of that, and re-weld it into his left-hand drive car, and then make it a right-hand drive car and put everything back in. That's crazy, <laughs> the, things, the things we do with cars. Now, I've owned and raced many Mark I Golfs. I've wrecked over 24 of them when they were going out of phase here. Uh, and the firewall and some of the fittings under the dash on the Mark I Golf showed that they allowed for certain things to be either left or right-hand drive when Volkswagen made that shell. But with this Mark IV, they've taken things to a whole new level. That's just a brilliant design. Let me show it to you. Now, this is a blue car. And if you notice, the firewall is black. And the firewall is a separate panel. I've undone all the bolts and I can't get it out just for the sake of showing you because they've glued it in with some super rubber and I don't need it, so there's no real need for me to take it out other than to show you. But that's a removable panel. So what VW obviously do is they make the shell when they paint it and then they decide this is going to be a left or a right hand drive car and they put in the appropriate firewall and wiring loom and then fit it out accordingly. Isn't that absolutely brilliant? A choice of firewall options right at the manufacturer's base. I think that is brilliant. blue 1.6 car that James bought at auction is ready to go to the scrap metal merchants the front suspension has been removed just for spare parts and the wheels when I strip out a car I really strip out a car We covered more stuff than I've intended up to this point. It's supposed to be a basic dirt car build. I apologise that it's got a little more complicated than that with the wrecking of this blue car for a conversion on a Mark I that James is going to go. So you can disregard all that. You can disregard the taking, my taking the engine in and out of the two litre car. You obviously wouldn't have to do that if you're building a basic dirt car. So where we pick it up in the next episode should be solely with the rally car, this, this poor old thing will be chopped to pieces. Thanks for watching.